This is a real story. It's something that's hard to talk about, even now, because it sounds insane. But it happened, and I can't ignore it anymore. The worst part is that I'm not the only one. We all went through it, and now we're stuck with the same terrifying reality. It started years ago, when I got involved with a group that called themselves The Watchers. Back then, I didn't think much of it. It was just supposed to be a retreat, something to help me deal with some personal issues I was going through. I wasn't looking for anything extreme, just an escape. The group didn't advertise itself as a cult, of course. They were secretive, exclusive, and I found out about them through a mutual acquaintance. The way it was presented to me made it seem harmless, even therapeutic. They talked about enlightenment, about reconnecting with lost knowledge, and the idea that we as a species were disconnected from a deeper understanding of the world around us. The people in the group were quiet but intense. They had this aura of knowing something the rest of us didn't. That's what drew me in the idea that maybe they had answers, that maybe they understood something beyond the ordinary. I should have known better. At first, the meetings were almost normal. We'd gather in an old building on the outskirts of town, dimly lit and filled with incense. It was the kind of place that felt spiritual, but not overtly threatening. We'd sit in a circle, talk about life, about the things that weighed us down, and the leader, a man named Elias, would guide us through these strange meditations. He spoke about unseen beings, watchers in the shadows. Elias would say that we were never alone, that all around us were ancient forces observing everything we did. At first, I dismissed it as metaphorical, some kind of spiritual guidance about self-awareness. But then the rituals started. They weren't presented as rituals at first, just exercises to help us see beyond we were told to sit in silence, in complete darkness, and focus on the feeling of being watched. It's strange how quickly you can convince yourself of something if you're in the right mindset. The first few times, nothing happened, but after a while, I started to feel it, the sensation of eyes on me. It was subtle at first, just a tingle at the back of my neck. I told myself it was my imagination, but the feeling grew stronger every time. I'd sit there in that dark room, my heart pounding, convinced something was watching. Elias told us this was progress, that we were becoming more attuned to the watchers. He said they were always there, but most people couldn't sense them. We were supposed to be different, more open to their presence. I wasn't the only one. The others in the group started talking about similar experiences. Some even claimed they could hear whispers, soft voices just out of reach. The air would grow thick with unease during these sessions. The more we participated, the more intense it got. Elias told us the Watchers were ancient, older than humanity itself, and that they existed in a realm just beyond our perception. We were close to breaking through. I remember one night, after a particularly long ritual, I walked home feeling unsettled. The streets were empty, but I couldn't shake the sensation that I wasn't alone. The hairs on my arms stood up and my skin tingled. I tried to tell myself it was just nerves, that the rituals were getting to me. But when I got to my apartment, the feeling didn't go away. It followed me inside like something had come back with me. That night, the lights in my apartment started flickering. At first, I ignored it, but then I heard a faint whisper so quiet I thought I was imagining it. It didn't sound like a person. It was too unnatural. I didn't sleep that night. I kept the lights on, hoping the sensation would fade, but it didn't. Every time I closed my eyes, I felt that presence, like something was standing right next to me, watching. Over the next few weeks, it got worse. I'd see shadows move out of the corner of my eye, feel a cold breeze in a room with no open windows. No matter where I went, the sensation of being watched followed me. I stopped going to the meetings after that. Something had changed. The watchers weren't just an abstract idea anymore. They felt real, too real, and I wasn't sure if Elias knew how far it had gone. But even after I left, it didn't stop. The watchers were still there, always just on the edge of my perception. I'd be alone in my apartment, and suddenly the lights would flicker, or I'd hear faint footsteps in the hallway. I wasn't the only one who left. A few others stopped showing up at the meetings around the same time I did. One of them, Rachel, reached out to me after she noticed the same things happening to her. We met up at a cafe, trying to make sense of it all. She told me she'd been hearing whispers at night, too, and sometimes she'd wake up to find her door slightly open, even though she'd locked it before bed. 
It was like the Watchers had followed us, like we'd invited them into our lives during those rituals, and now they wouldn't leave. We didn't know what to do. Every time we talked about it, the activity seemed to get worse. The others who had left started experiencing similar things. Flickering lights, strange sounds, and the feeling of being watched, constantly. It was relentless, like we were being hunted by something invisible. I tried ignoring it, hoping it would go away on its own. But the more I tried to pretend it wasn't happening, the more intense it got. One night, my phone rang in the middle of the night, but no one was there. I listened for a few seconds, thinking it was a wrong number, but then I heard it breathing. Slow, deliberate, and far too close. I hung up immediately, my heart racing. I couldn't stay in my apartment after that. I went to stay with a friend for a while, thinking I'd get some distance, that maybe I could escape it if I wasn't alone. But the feeling followed me. The watchers were everywhere. There was no escaping them. We tried talking to each other, those of us who had left the group. But every time we shared our experiences, things would escalate. It was like the more we acknowledged the watchers, the closer they got. Eventually, the nightmares started. I'd wake up in a cold sweat, convinced something was in the room with me, standing at the foot of my bed, staring. I never saw it directly, but I could feel it, just out of reach. I don't know what the Watchers want. I don't even know if they're real in the way we understand reality. But they're there. I can feel them, and I know they're waiting for something, something I can't stop. None of us who left the group have been the same since. We don't talk about it anymore, not really. We tried, but every conversation made it worse, brought them closer. Now, we just endure it in silence. The Watchers don't leave. I've tried everything, moved apartments, left the city, even considered leaving the country. But no matter where I go, they follow. They're always watching, always waiting. I don't go out much anymore. The idea of being around people makes me anxious, like the Watchers are just behind my shoulder, waiting for me to slip, to let my guard down. I don't know how much longer I can take it. Sometimes I wonder if Elias knew all along. If he knew what the Watchers really were and still led us into those rituals. Or maybe he was just as blind as the rest of us. Either way, it doesn't matter now. The Watchers are real. They're with me every second of every day. I don't know what they're waiting for, but I know they won't stop. I know they're getting closer. And I know there's no escaping them.